Hello and welcome to LanguageCraft for the 13th episode of Let's Time Lapse. Now here we are going over the manor, big manor house that we built last time with its little gazebo, its little fountain, the jetty that comes out for the boats. And over here we have the farm, big, big farm because, well, we have enough fields for the whole village, but we need also something to store all the wheat and we need places to a place to take care of all the animals a lot of uh, pigs a lot of um, chickens things like that anyway the manor to be honest is way too big uh, but i think it really looks really good we talked about it it's it doesn't belong in that time but that's okay here are a few houses that i also built in between the two episodes as i always do and we see that the village is really starting to be fleshed out and it's coming slowly but surely towards the harbor uh, so we're probably going to have to do that pretty soon. And we're coming up next to the church, and we're following a path. Now, if you read the title of the episode, or maybe you simply remember the layout we made during the second episode of the series, today you know that we are starting the monastery. Now, as you can see, there are two of us today. I'm joined by Mimi Lala, who's an admin of Languagecraft. She's actually in charge of most of the applications to join the team, and she really rose up among all the ranks. Uh, she's been with us for quite a while. In fact, she has built on this time lapse before. She's built on this map. Uh, she did part of the pattern for the windmill, and she did the fountain on the main square. She also built a few houses here and there. So together, we're building a huge map for a show called Flag Wars 3, which is a, a French series that I'm working on. And this is the whole team, so it's a, it's a really big project. And she built the monastery on that map. That's why I invited her to make one here as well. I thought, well, she's got experience, she's the expert. Um, I'd be glad to have her help. Now, the first element of a monastery is, of course, the religious building itself, the one around which everything is going to be centered. This is where the monks will come to pray. Like any church, it faces east, which limited our choice in placement. Um, that was that started being a problem, but in the end, I think it created a really cool corner of the monastery. I think it's really cozy and really nice. Uh, you'll see it in a few shots. I'd say that's my favorite area in the whole place. At the very end, we decided to put a crypt inside the chapel rather than another cemetery, because you can see the other church from here, and it has a cemetery right around there. We didn't want to have too many so close together. But let's talk about the church in general. During medieval times, the church was extremely powerful. Now, there were three estates of the realm in those times. Nobility, clergy, and commoners. The first two estates only comprised 3% of the population, which is incredible. Everyone else was a commoner. Most of them were poor, like peasants, but don't forget that the bourgeoisie was also in this estate, so not everyone was poor. Some were wealthier than noblemen, but as far as titles go, they had nothing. Anyway, the church was very wealthy because it didn't pay any taxes, but it could make its own taxes for noblemen and commoners to absolve one's sins, for example. As for monasteries, there were two main orders in France. Clunisians, who were wealthy and owned buildings to show it, they were very intricate, pretty big. This is the order our monastery is closest to, although Keep in mind, we are in a fictional world. It's inspired by the Middle Ages in Europe, but it's not actually France or Germany or Great Britain. It's made up. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the Cistercians. They're more like beggars, in a way, and they have very, very sober surroundings to stay close to Jesus and his poverty. We thought it was a bit less interesting in Minecraft and not as close to what we naturally do in Let's Time Maps. So we stuck with the Clunisians. So we're currently building a cloister. I'm sure everyone has seen one before, whether through photos or even by visiting old abbeys that are open to the public. I built one for Lem Cathedral a while back, and you'll see how central this is to the whole monastery. Well, first of all, it's one of the only places where you have greenery. And it's also a place where monks can relax and pray. Oriendo also told me it was also often one of the only places where they could speak, which I found fascinating. As for proportions, we were very lucky. 
Mimi Lala and I spent hours drawing out the plans and then building everything. And only afterwards did Oyendo send me all the historical information. So I'm able to use all that info for the voiceover, but it was too late for the actual construction, for the thought process of the monastery. One important thing, for example, is that seven is a sacred number in the uh, Catholic religion. And cloisters often had three posts on one side and four on the other side. That's not what we did, but it turns out we have three arches on one side and four on the other, so it adds up. In any case, I've seen cloisters with a lot more posts than that. I think the main thing is the proportion, not so much the actual numbers. As for the exterior, we made complex patterns as usual. Mimi Lala is very good at those. And as in previous episodes with Mikomega and Teofil, we are constantly helping each other and working on the same areas rather than each staying in a corner. Now that may be why all these buildings are great and different. I'm kind of a constant. I'm in every single one and I have my own style. But the person I work with, they also have their own style. And they put their own twists on things. Having variations makes things much more interesting, even though we also have to keep a constant because this is a unified village. In the case of this village, I think the constant might be the roofs. No one has managed to make them quite like me so far, and if you pay attention you may notice that I'm always the one who does them during episodes with guests. It's not that complicated really, but it's sort of a twisted logic. So the monastery isn't huge, but in a few episodes we'll visit it again and change some things. You'll understand why we split it into two parts. They are very different and they mark different stages in the development of the monastery. Now one thing I didn't want to do, as I stated in my previous episode, was to have several specialties in the village. So I don't want the monastery to be too important and to lead others, for example. So I think it's a priory, led by a prior, instead of an abbey, which is led by an abbot. I was surprised to learn that that was the difference. I, uh, I didn't know, and it turns out that when you have an abbey that's led by an abbot, it's often at the head of, uh, of several monasteries. Now here is my favorite corner. You may have noticed so far that something was missing. The bell tower. Yes, of course, we need bells to ring. Mimi Lala had the idea to separate the bell tower from the actual uh, chapel or church. And so we put it on the other side of this courtyard, with stairs coming down in between from the cloister. The whole thing hangs out a bit close to the river, and I just love the feeling there, even though I'm not that happy with the actual wall in itself. Uh, we had to do this shot several times because my laptop froze, uh, and I wasn't as happy the last time I did it. Um, to give you a context for the uh, computer, the filming, the whole time lapse section took us a whole day, non-stop, for about 10 hours. We only had the one day to shoot it because of our different schedules, and my laptop ran at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit for a whole day, which I'm sure was a great idea for it. Anyway, I think the bell tower here was a great idea, and Mimiana's pattern really adds to the feel of the place. Now finally, onto the facade of the church. It's very classical, and it has a rose window above the door. Now, you will remember that everything here is still filmed in 1.5.1, which limits our choice of blocks because I don't want to change the shader pack in the middle of the season. I just love this look, and I think it would be too bad to break it. But I was very recently informed that shader packs could be moved to more recent versions. You didn't have to have the version that it says on the shader pack. This means I will probably be updating the version in the next few episodes. So that means that I'll have hay, I'll have colored glass, and I'll have clay. So all these things will be in the final map, um, that you'll be able to download at the end of the season. This is a great step and I think it's going to improve the whole map. Now we need to come back to the cloister and add a few things to finish it up. We have a lot of rooms to fit in here. On the first floor will be the kitchen and the dining room. The chapter room is also on the first floor. That's where all the decisions for the priory are taken. And about the trees that we're putting, for the moment they're plain vanilla trees but at the very, very end of the season, we'll go over the entire map and add custom trees everywhere. 
with Voxel Sniper. On to the cinematic. Coming from the village, we can see the bell tower a ways away. It's very important to have height in the village. And we have a few structures that are breaking from the height of the area, just to make sure things don't get too monotonous. On this side of the monastery, we have an entrance. And in the future, we will also have a courtyard around here. Here's a close-up of the bell tower. And if you look closely, you may notice that we tried to make a bell inside, but we didn't have much width to play with, so I'm not too sure of the result. We couldn't use many stairs because it would look too stony. Inside the chapel, you can see the sun rising since, of course, it's facing east. And here is the entrance to the crypt, which is filled up, but will be built in the future. The courtyard over here that's my favorite spot, and we'll finally see the inside of the cloister. Now the rooms on the second floor are important as well. You have the dormitories and the library, which is also where the monks copied books, since the printing machine didn't exist in those days. They spent about a third of the day in that room, a major part of their life. Now I'm not sure if monks really took breaks or relaxed, but if they did, I'm sure that that's where they would do it. It's peaceful, it's away from the busy village center, it's calm, and it's even by the river. You can see zones around the edges of here that aren't terraformed, but have no worries, it shall be done. Not necessarily before the map is out, but in the future. Remember, each season will be on the same map, so maybe the next structure will be in that direction. Who knows? Anyway, this is the end of the episode with the updated map. You can see the monastery, it is quite a ways away. Not as far as the manor, but still. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Mimi, Lala, and I certainly did. We had a blast. Uh, it was a very long day, but a great experience. So thank you, Mimi, and thanks to Laps and Oriendo for all the history advice. So I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Time Lapse. Bye-bye.